This is Phoenix, baby. This is beautiful. Look at this. In Scottsdale, they're known for these incredible golf courses. You golfed here? Of course. All my medical meetings. And as a matter of fact, guess what I did? You brought your golf clubs. I brought my golf clubs. You brought your golf clubs here? Just in case. You know what I heard about you and golfing? It's a love-hate relationship. Yeah. My brother-in-law, as you know, greatest guy. Here we go. He said you broke clubs. He said you're mad the whole time. How is golfing relaxing to you when you're mad the whole time? I'm not mad. I know you get mad and you throw clubs. No, I don't. Let me ask you a question. Yes or no? Have you ever thrown a club while you're golfing? Once. <laughs> the only time that I would throw a club is when it's headed towards Terry DeBro. Here to see a patient named Nicole Dudley, and she has Wegener's granulomatosis. Oh, wow. Wegener's granulomatosis is a very rare disease. It's basically a vasculitis where it collapses of small blood vessels, and it could affect your sinuses, your throat, your nose, your lungs, and your kidneys, and it could even cause death. In Nicole's case, it completely destroyed her nose. And, you know, apparently it's affecting her social life, self-confidence, work, the whole bit. She needs help. Someone's home. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Hello. I'm Dr. I'm Nancy. Nicole. Nice Terry to meet you. I'm Nicole. Nice to meet I'm you. I'm good. How are you guys? We're great. Well, obviously, we're here to see you. Hi, <laughs> I cannot believe these two men are standing at my door. Dr. Debro and Dr. Nassif, I've seen their work. They've worked on patients that have had cases like mine, and they know all about the type of surgery I need. Pinch me. Look who's here, you guys. Dr. Nassif. Hi, I'm Susan Nikki's mom. Terry Debro, nice, nice to meet you. Nice. Hi, I'm Danielle. I'm excited to be nice here. Nice to meet you. I'm David. Nicole's boyfriend. Terry Debro, pleased to meet you guys. Dr. Nassif's oh boyfriend. <laughs> Come in, let's sit down. Great. Let's see. I can't believe you guys are here. I mean, it's nice to be in, uh, I mean, the weather is beautiful out here in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hi. Isn't it? So, Nicole. Yeah. Love to hear a little bit about your story. In 2009, I was sick all the time, coughing, and then I had migraines a lot. I had really muffled hearing in my right ear. My vision would go blurry sometimes. I had these crusts coming out of my nose that I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if even parts of like my brain were coming through my nose. And so finally, I went to a doctor and eventually we did five biopsies. And so through the biopsies, he diagnosed me with Wegener's granulomatosis. What did he tell you that it was About it, yeah. it restricts blood flow. And so the way he described it to me is it pretty much like sucks everything like dry because it doesn't have the, the vessels. That's right. Yeah. I was scared. Not only was I sick, but my face started to change shape. When I was a little kid, I had the cutest little nose, and everyone always wanted my little nose. But my nose was starting to look all smushed, and my nostrils, like one of them, was starting to be lower than the other. What was the first thing you saw in the mirror that changed about your nose? It was just smu like smushing. It was collapsed. Right. Nose. Yeah. That must, could, could you imagine? Essentially, with a severe case of Wegener's, all the cartilage in your nose falls apart because there's no blood supply to that area. My auntie referred me out to a plastic surgeon. He decided the best route to go would be to put a silicone implant into the bridge and the tip of my nose. I woke up from surgery. He said everything went great, and I went home. Everything looked really good. I was just swollen, but honestly, it didn't even hurt as bad as I thought it would. Three weeks, I started to get a fever. You are getting an infection. infection. Yeah, I, I, I had an infection. September of 2011, we went back in for my second surgery. I thought we were gonna just shave it down. Woke up from surgery. Took it out, yeah. I would have almost rather died than have him take out my implant. I did not want to go back to what I, the nose I had. My no. mom was there. He was devastated himself. Of course he was. He came out and hugged me and said, I'm so sorry. When you see a patient who has had a problem with their plastic surgery that was done on a congenital problem or a problem related to an accident or a disease, that's usually not the doctor's fault. Those are much more complicated situations due to the basic nature of the problem and the anatomy you're dealing with. Do you feel better after all that came out? So I felt like instant relief. The infection resolved immediately. Yeah. Is the vascular situation under complete control right now? Yes. So you're off medication. Off medication. And yep. it's over for now. Yes. That's 
awesome. I'm happy to hear that Nicole's Wegener's granulomatosis is dormant right now. That means it's not actively destroying your blood vessels. However, Wegener's is a chronic disease. You never get rid of it. And there's also the possibility that by operating on Nicole's nose, the disease can become activated. It can, first of all, ruin everything I've done and actually make the nose look worse. But what's it like living with this? And I just try not to think about it. <laughs> I just try to, you know, just live life and not pay attention to, like, people looking at me. So people do look at you? <laughs> Does it affect work? I don't really like put myself out there at all. It totally holds me back. What do you do? I am a real estate agent. But when you do real estate sales, you have to meet new people. Yeah. So you always go through <laughs> your mind. Oh, okay, yeah. Here we go. Like every with this. open house, nauseating anxiety. If you meet somebody with something like this, you're going to wonder what's wrong with them. You're not going to be able to not look at it. You're not going to be able to not notice it. So is there that uncomfortable period of time till they're going to bring it up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had cl many clients ask me. So what do you say? I just tell them I was sick and I had a surgery and, you know, and at least I didn't die, basically. I right. mean, I'm lucky to be alive. I wasn't having plastic surgery that went yeah. badly, right? I actually had I a disease. I just try to, like, answer it as quickly as possible right. and then bring up another subject. Right, right. <laughs> If Dr. Nassif and Dr. Debro can help me, I'll do anything you want. If you want me to jump off a cliff because it will help my nose, I will go jump off that cliff. I want the nose I once had back really bad. You know, the thing we want to do is examine you. Okay. When a physician sees someone in so much pain, you want to help the patient, but Nicole's nose is in bad shape. And I don't even know if I can help her. Put your head back for me. Okay. All right. So your skin over your tip is not the best. So all this is no good right here. You can breathe when I do that, can't you? Yes. Yeah, it can stretch and it can contract it all the way down. Nicole's nose is awful. The cartilage is pretty much gone. The skin is terrible. There's crusting everywhere. This is gonna be a real challenge for me. First of all, putting an implant is not an option because you don't have a blood supply there. Putting a foreign body in an area with no blood supply, you get infection. Not gonna work, ever. What can you do? Rib? Take some skin and cartilage from your ear, and we'll try to realign the inside of your nose around the nostrils. Basically, reconstruct everything. I look at old photos all the time of my nose and how it wasn't even a big deal to me. And now I'd give anything for that nose back. The biggest part is you don't have skin here. Let's say we actually extend everything here and rebuild everything. You're not, your skin's not gonna close. That's, that skin's no good. Yeah. So, nasolabial flap. A nasolabial flap is basically utilizing a piece of the cheek tissue. We lift it up, we move it over to reconstruct a portion of the nose. The goal would be to take that whole piece of skin while it's still attached to the blood supply right here, flip that bone apart up around attached right here, and then after that looks pretty good, we're gonna sever it, stitch this up, and then the biggest thing for you is gonna be healing. Knowing I have to have the flap on my face is scary. Makes me sick to my stomach. No matter how good of a job we do technically, the problem is the blood supply. And this is something I can't tell you. There could be a 50% chance. Great? Not great. Hearing that the surgery might not work kills me inside. I've been hoping for it for so long. I don't want to give up that hope because I need it that bad. But one thing you could take to the bank is we didn't come all the way out here unless we thought we could help you, and you can be cautiously optimistic Cautious. because... Cause so cautiously optimistic is the fa my favorite word. Right. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I think we should do it. Yeah. I think we have to. I've suffered for a lot of years. I don't have a profile. It looks smushed, deformed. I mean, I, ha I have no other shot. <laughs> so we'll see you back in California. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having us coming home. So Thank you much. so much. Bye. I can't believe they came here. I can't either. How lucky can you believe am I? That? I know. I know. I love you so love much. You too. I'm so proud of you. That is a hard case. Look, they're all 10 out of 10 hard, technically, right? But there are factors we have no control of, and we have no idea as to what's underlying there. Nature is our enemy here. This is a huge responsibility. We have a very difficult surgery, and someone who didn't do this on purpose. She just acquired this horrible disease. She's been through a lot. If we get a good result, this can be life-changing for Nicole.
a nice place. It's like, it's gorgeous, it's pretty here. Recently, I've been taking golf lessons, and I have to tell you, I've been hitting the ball pretty well. So it's a great time to take Terry out, hit some golf balls, let's get some fresh air. Even though he doesn't play, we could have a good time. Where do I stand? Just go like this, like you're about to sit down on the toilet. Don't fart, please. Who knew? You know, you must have taken a lesson, my friend. I have never taken you. a lesson in my life. Terry, I know how you are. You must have taken some lessons or done something, because there is no such thing as beginner's luck in golf. Yeah, baby. It's got fun. Admit it, you've been practicing all the time and taking lessons, most likely. No, I swear, I haven't swung club since I was like 12. That was impressive. That went about seven yards. Yep. I can't hit the ball, can I? That went eight yards. You're getting better. One more yard. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a turtle within 10 yards of you. If you keep heckling me, I am going to throw this club at your head. So golf, not your sport. <laughs> Can we stop? Yeah. Yeah. You OK? Yeah. Tala is my best friend. We've been friends since I was 15. And if there's ever anyone I need to talk to, she's always the person I go to. Doing an, a surgery again? Yeah, I have to. Dr. Nassif and Dr. Debro. They're the doctors in LA. Are you scared? Well, yeah, of course. What if, like, something goes wrong again? If Dr. Nassif and Dr. Debro aren't able to help me, it'll crush me. And I'm going to have to live like this forever. They're like the best doctor, so if they can't help me, this is it. I would really mean that like nobody could. I think this will be life changing for Nikki because she was never somebody who wanted to change her face in any way, and then it just changed for her. And I, I don't want to see her get her hopes up and have anything not work out again. I just, I feel like I'm at the point where everything is so good. And it's the one thing that like completely holds me back. It's time to like just be over it. It's just been a hard like five years. For the past five years, I've just been settling. I'm just really excited for it to be over. It's life changing. I'm excited to see your new nose after. <laughs> your, your old, old new nose. Me too. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nicole. I'm here for surgery with Dr. Nassif. Okay, go ahead and sign me right there. Coming back into surgery is really scary for me because the last time I had surgery, it did not turn out the way that I was hoping it would. But I'm here. I'm ready. Hi, Mom. Hi. How are you, sweetheart? I'm getting ready to have surgery. And I just wanted to tell you I love you, and I'll call you as soon as I can after surgery. I love you. Everything's going to be good, Nikki. I just know it. I just know you will. <laughs> and I know it's going to go good. OK, I love you. I love you, too, sweetie. Bye. Today is Nicole's major surgery, which is going to be the first stage. I mean, the risk with Regner's granulomatosis is that no disease is in remission right now, but I could come back and react, and that could kill all my grafts. If that occurs, the whole nose is going to collapse again. So I just have to be really careful. My plan is to first take a left ear composite graft and take a piece of rib. I will then reconstruct the tip of the nose. Lastly, I will create a nasal labial flap from the left cheek in order to reconstruct the base of the nose. Okay, so I'll start with the composite graft and the left ear. This is a very big composite graft. A nice rib. Let's start the nose. So, you know, this tissue is not that great. I'm already irritated because there was a dorsal implant in here, so we got to be really careful about this dissection. I'm going to try to lift up the skin. This is really, really hard to do. This is not a great start. I'm having a hard time lifting up the skin. Most likely, this is due to scar tissue that was formed from her previous surgery. And so I'm a little afraid of how much damage I'm going to find once I open up the nose. You have small other batten grafts. Just kind of gently hold there. Hard tip reconstruction. She has pretty brittle cartilage. They're calcified? She had calcifications through it. It's a pretty creative reconstruction, though. This is about as hard as it gets. This is, this is, I don't like the way this is doing this. I need it. I'm not going to be happy with this. In the most simple way for me to say this, the tissue is no good. 
I just don't know how the grass are gonna live. It's one of these things where we just have to see how she heals. So we finished the major part of the reconstruction of the nose. So we have the cartilage framework in place. Now we gotta do is lift up that flap. We need a lot of skin. <laughs> you need a lot more skin than that. So we gotta make sure that blood vessel is intact. There we go. So that's the pulsation of the blood going through the artery. We're making a nasolabial flap, and we really need the blood supply to be completely intact. So with the use of a Doppler, which is something that you can hear the blood vessel of this flap, we want to listen to it and trace out the blood vessel. And then we cut around it to make the nasolabial flap. There we go. I'm going to make sure I'm not going too deep. Should I keep going? I'm getting very afraid. Elevating a flap like this, it's always scary because if you make one wrong move, hit the blood vessel, that flap is gonna die. Okay, it looks pretty good. Just as long as this darn flap lives. It is a little white, which is pretty concerning. We don't want white. White means there's some flow impairment. So we need to keep an eye on this and make sure that we do everything we can to help her nose heal. I think the flap is in set about as best as we can do it for right now. I mean, it's got plenty of bulk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, Nicole. Hi, over here for my post op. Um, okay. Go ahead and sign in. Okay. And we'll let them know that you're here, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. My face feels super swollen. I'm feeling like I got hit by a truck. And I'm hoping that I didn't go through all of this for nothing. Hi. Hello, you two. How's it look? You look good. So did you take a look at the um, extra little hot dog you got on your face there? It looks like I have, like, a figure sticking out of my nose. But, but you're not freaking out too much. No, I'm trying not to. How's it look? It's not purple. You know, it's uh, the color is more evened out. Yeah. That shows me that there's some blood supply to the nose. That's exactly what we want to see. So we're going to take out this little okay. pack here. That's it. See if you can breathe at all. Oh my god, I can totally breathe. That's so awesome. This moment is so exciting to me. I did not expect to be able to breathe today. That gives me the light at the end of the tunnel. Your skin is the limiting factor. It wasn't like we can pop your skin out, because all the cartilage inside your nose was gone. OK. Except for a little small piece about, you know, that big. I think we build up everything that I could in your nose. Today, Nicole's nose is looking great, but we just don't know how it's gonna heal. The flap can still die or turn purple. The cartilage can collapse. There could be an infection, there could be bleeding. So we have to keep a close eye on Nicole's nose. Thank you, with you guys, seriously. Now you just gotta heal. I know, I know, we still have a long road, but like, such a blessing. After this neck surgery, I'm looking forward to not have this huge thing on my face. Thank you so much. My surgery process was a long one. So many doctors that I had talked to didn't even know what Wegener's granulomatosis was. Dr. Nassif and Dr. Debro came all the way to Arizona and knew exactly what I was going through. I was blown away. It doesn't even feel like reality still to think that this all started with a knock on the door. Can you guys believe this is over finally? I can't believe it, I'm so excited. I mean, it's been one thing after another, and now she's finally done. She deserves it. She, she deserves it. it. I just feel great. I'm excited to start life again with my mom and my sister and my best friend. Hey, guys. Hi. Oh, my God. Oh, my hey God. God. Hey. It's so oh exciting. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let me see. Oh, my God. I ended up having six surgeries, more surgeries than we thought I was going to need. Gorgeous. But Dr. Nassif stuck with me through all of them, and I'm so grateful to him for that. Nikki, you look so <laughs> great. <laughs> it's over. It's finally over. <laughs> you look gorgeous. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you too. Nikki looks absolutely gorgeous. Makes me so excited and so thrilled for her. I great. feel so good. You have a full nose. Yeah, I know. 
It feels a lot better to look in the mirror now. Before my surgery, my nose was ravaged by a disease. I had no cartilage and no airway. Now, I have a profile, I have a tip, and a perfectly functioning nose, and the feeling is indescribable. No, but really, I wanted to thank you all for just being there for me every day <laughs> and just being so supportive. I knew that I had a strong support system before, but going through this has just reiterated my family is the best. I couldn't have done it without all of you, so thank you. Oh. And thank you You've been... for contacting the doctors. I'm all just that so happened. glad they said yes. <laughs> Dr. Nassif has given me the opportunity to be able to breathe again, and now it's changed my life. I'm so happy with how brave you were to go through everything, how strong you are. I love you so much. I love you too. Looking back, I cannot believe that I did that. The flat being on my face, it was scary, you know, seeing people's reactions, but I'm so glad I did not give up. I can't believe they could actually fix everything. Yeah, they had their work cut out for them. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on this journey, it feels incredible. Like, <laughs> I feel normal. I just feel like me again. Oh, man. Too many tears. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> I think it's the right amount. You look so good. Yeah. It really is like looking at you in high school again. I feel like we're 16. Oh, wow. That's pushing yeah. it. <laughs>